Hello, and welcome to our continuing E3 coverage for E3 2019. With me is Zach. Hello. We took like a month break, but we're back to finish up what we started. Zach, this is my secret ploy to convert this channel into just talking about E3 (laughs) for the rest of the year. Is it a little bit like leaving your Christmas lights up all year round? I'm pro that in this instance, because I love (laughs) to talk about E3. I don't get to talk about it with anyone else in my life. Well, I mean, we're talking about some of the other news that's happened like with Nintendo just recently, uh, and we wouldn't have been able to talk about it in this video if we had recorded it back when uh, E3 actually was happening, so. Look forward to E3 videos for the rest of the year. Unofficially, but yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, yeah, this, this one we're talking about the Nintendo press conference or the Direct that happened at E3. And uh, I don't know, should we just start going down the list? Yeah, let's so uh, yeah, start off with a new character coming to Smash Brothers. Do you know the name of this character? Yeah, I think it's Nameless, isn't it? Is it? I have no idea. It's Dragon Quest, uh, uh, the character from Dragon Quest. I don't know what his name is. Another sword I don't think guy. he has a name. I think he might be called like the Courier or something, but you he doesn't have right. a, you, you like you get to name him. But yeah, this was a weird thing to start out with. Cause I mean, it is Smash DLC, which everyone cares about. But I feel like not a ton of people care about Dragon Quest. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's like a th- big thing in Japan. I'm sure it is. But yeah, this I mean, I imagine like... it's huge in Japan. But I, I feel like this was just like a sort of appetizer type of a thing. And the real like Smash Brothers announcement was saved for later. But we'll get to that Spoilers. eventually. Spoilers. For something that happened a month ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they followed that up by also saying that Dragon Quest Eleven, the definitive edition, is coming out September 27th. This is another thing where I was just like, all right, come on. Let's get to the good stuff. (laughs) And then the good stuff happened with the next thing they talked about, which is Luigi's Mansion 3. Uh, Did you play the first Luigi's Mansion? I played an arcade version of Luigi's Mansion where you sat inside basically. It's like one of those sit inside the ride kind of things. And then you you both have like vacuums in front of you. Uh, So I played a very dumbed down version of Luigi's Mansion 2. But this looks very good i didn't play it myself but i had siblings who played the game and i watched it and i didn't play the ds version but i am super looking forward to this after what i saw at e3 they had that whole treehouse live thing that they always do which by the way that's like the format that everybody should just copy from now on just like do a treehouse live style thing where you actually go around and do uh, live gameplay demos with like the developer of each game instead of just like show us a cinematic trailer and then that's it (laughs) and everything else is behind closed doors because uh the luigi's mansion 3 one looked really cool but they also had like it was almost like this disneyland like thing where you're walking into this like mansion style setup that they had built and they had like all these characters everywhere it was really cool looking and i kind of wanted to to go to it but so yeah luigi's mansion 3 is coming out fall in the fall of 2019 and it takes place in a haunted hotel this time not a mansion so maybe it should be called luigi's haunted hotel Mm. <laughs> uh, You're bearing I, the lead, Zach. Am I? Gooigi is coming to this. Gooigi. I guess that's true. There, people were talking about Gooigi. They think he's gross, though. I am into it because I love local co-op stuff, especially on the yeah. Switch, but... This looks crazy because it seems like it opens the door, even if you're not playing co-op, for a bunch of crazy puzzle schemes that happen. Yeah, they did show some of that multiplayer mode. It's called uh, Scare Scraper. Uh, They showed some of that during the Treehouse Live. And yeah, it seems like just a cooperative mode where you're going from floor to floor and they're just like sort of it's a kind of a random role what kind of challenge you're gonna get and i think the one that they showed it was like the first floor you were just clearing ghosts and the second floor you had to like find and rescue four toads and then the third floor was like collect a certain amount of money and so you're just kind of seeing how far up the the tower you can climb or whatever it's like a roguelike almost yeah a little bit i don't know yeah i was into it as well i think it would be a lot of fun 
the one thing like i would love to play it with you at some point whenever it comes out but it did say you have to like use the nintendo chat app or whatever which seems awful but i mean i guess you could always just use discord but yeah i think switch shines with local multiplayer i think and i feel like nothing maybe splatoon has been good on online but i don't know i feel yeah, like i'm I not think people, buying i've heard a lot of people complain games. about their online especially in regard to smash yeah you gotta have twitch reflexes with the game like that and latency is not great yeah zach do you like the dark crystal i have never seen it Ooh, zach neither have i <laughs> i feel it's like, like a, everyone a in the world people has except love us. It, right yeah <laughs> Everyone loves it, and neither of us have seen it, but <laughs> I'm going to watch it before the Netflix thing, because the Netflix thing looks good. But in addition to the new Netflix show, they're also making some weird tactics game for Switch, I guess? Yeah, I don't know. If I guess if you like tactics games and you like grew up loving the Dark Crystal, you're probably going to be into this, but... Something I am into is uh, Link's Awakening, that remake that they're com- that's coming. And it's coming on September 20th, 2019. It's very soon. Yeah, it is sooner than I expected, honestly. I kind of thought this was going to be towards the end of the year. But again, they showed a lot of this during the Treehouse Live. And they, they showed that you can like create a dungeon or whatever and challenge yes. your friends to complete them. Very weird. Because like people have speculated since Mario Maker is a big hit. They showed that old school, I don't remember, do you remember when they were talking about developing Breath of the Wild? They were like, oh, we went back to our roots. We made like a 2D version of Breath of the Wild to sort of workshop ideas. And people were speculating like, oh, they have this engine. They're going to make a 2D Zelda maker. And they didn't, they didn't, because that would probably be a lot more difficult than Mario Maker. I still think they might. But uh, this is kind of that, not really. I mean, it just basically allows you to drag and drop different parts of dungeons into your own thing. I don't know if you, I don't think you can create objectives or anything. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know exactly how it works, but it it did seem a little like Zelda Maker, but not. <laughs> I don't know. It, it'll be a thing that I probably won't do much of, but it's cool that it's there, I guess. I'm more interested in the rest of the game. Yes, I I have never played Link's Awakening, so I will be excited to see. I don't know. I wonder if they've changed key plot elements. Yeah, I mean that's it. Is another game that I didn't play growing up because I don't know. I just never got around to it. But yeah, it would be cool or very interesting to hear from somebody who did play it to just sort of talk about how it's different or whether they changed certain things or not. But well, something they. I don't know a transition for this. The next thing is Trials of Mana. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of this? Did you ever play the Trials games or the Mana games? People are really into these. Uh, I would maybe pick this up. It, is it all three of them? I Yeah, it's the collection of Mana is coming to Switch as well, and we'll have the three Mana games. Secret of Mana, I know, is like w- very well loved. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I I might check this out. I like a. I've been playing through Final Fantasy VII, and when I finish that, I'll probably want another like old school RPG to play. So it's possible I'll pick this up. They said early 2020 though, so we're gonna have to wait a little bit of time. Yeah, I mean they showed this at the Trios Live as well, and it looks pretty good. It, it really does. It's a game that I don't think I'll get around to playing because early 2020 is gonna be rough for a game like this to yeah. convince me to, to pick up over everything else that's going to be coming out in that time, but it does look pretty good. The Witcher 3, which is a giant game that people love, is somehow being squeezed down into a Switch cartridge, and it's coming to Switch in 2019. Is this good? Uh, I, it's cool, the idea that they could get this game running on the Switch. I, I, for- I'm so interested to see like what this looks like, what the fidelity is, and like what corners had to be, not cut, but maybe trimmed. I wonder, because it's such a big open world thing, I wonder what the draw distance is gonna be like and if it's gonna really chug during some of those moments, the the more intense moments, but. It remains to be seen. Like you talk about Skyrim is on Switch and that's all well and good. That's also an older game and the combat is not so like frenetic in Skyrim. I feel like a lot of Skyrim is just like crouching and shooting people with one arrow at a time and then until they forget they've been shot by an arrow and then you just do it again. (laughs) 
Yeah, I mean, I've played Skyrim on Switch and it seems to run just fine. Uh, granted, that was like a 360 PS3 era game yeah. and The Witcher 3 is a PS4 era game. So you would expect it to... Uh, I don't know. I guess it has to be able to, to run because Doom can run on it, so... It's true. And although Doom is not like a huge open world type of experience, it's a more linear game, but... I don't know. I wonder about some of these big games being ported to Switch. I, I need to check out the Digital Foundry videos to see what, what they actually run like. I did see they didn't announce this during the E3 press conference, but uh, Red Faction Guerrilla made its way. Yeah, I, you texted me about that. Yeah, and that's a game I love. But apparently the Switch port does not run well. I would imagine because like it's got that Geo mod where you can yeah. destroy everything, which has got to wreak havoc on the Switch's little processor. Yeah, even for a game that came out last generation, just like Skyrim did, just the fact that you are you have all that destruction and everything, the, the game... physics calculations. Yeah, the game just does not run super well on Switch. So maybe don't pick up that one. Uh, <laughs> and then, yeah, check Digital Foundry for The Witcher 3 before picking it up if you really want to so talk to me about fire emblem three houses i I, guess i've been back and forth on this uh i kind of i like turn-based strategy games now and then and i enjoyed the mobile fire emblem game and i like the anime art style and this game sort of reminds me of like a mix of Harry Potter or Persona 5 because it, it takes place in a school. And so apparently you play as a, pro- a professor at a military school teaching a bunch of different classes and you will pick a house to align yourself with, but you teach students from all the houses and you're playing through an entire school year and you're managing activities over the course of days and weeks trying to get students to learn abilities. So kind of like Persona 5 where you have to make good use of your time where you have to sort of decide, okay, on this day, I'm going to use my time to do such and such an activity. Oh, I didn't realize that uh, there was like a regular flow of time in this. Yeah, so it sounds very like it's borrowing that element from Persona 5. And I guess at some point, the uh, also I should say, they did say you could automate a lot of that stuff. So if you didn't really want to spend a lot of time dealing with all of that, you kind of don't have to. Um, but then I, I think eventually there's like a passage of five years and the different houses from your schools have gone to war with each other. And so you kind of, uh, it's interesting because you're going to sort of have ties to the people from all these different houses because you basically raised them, but now they're all going to war with each other. And so you will still have interactions with all the students from all those houses, but now they're kind of killing each other. And I also heard that the game's normal rock, paper, scissors, turn-based style of combat is changing. So it'll be like a new thing to learn for people like longtime fans of the game. You sound pretty hot on this. It's coming out July 26th. It seems like one of those games that like could come out at just the right time where there's not a lot else out and it could be a fun sort of summer playthrough. Yeah. I don't know. I, I might pick this up. I, I've been back and forth because I've never played a Fire Emblem game before and I think they have just way too many characters and they can be kind of confusing, but I kind of am interested a little bit. I think it seems kind of cool to me. Call me crazy. Zach, you're crazy. I thought so. (laughs) Uh, Resident Evil 5 and 6 are coming to Switch. They have a good port game. Yeah, they are porting everything to Switch, which is cool. Have you played either of these? I played Resident Evil 5. I did not play Resident Evil 6. Was 5 the one in Africa? I believe so. I played that one as well. I think I played... I think I played 6. 6 is, I mean, has that crazy logo. I that we all know about. (laughs) I feel like these were not the most well-received Resident Evil games, though. Yeah. So I don't know who's super looking forward to this, but I guess I remember there was a lot of... In Resident Evil 5, which I guess is the Africa one, 
I played it with a friend, which made it really fun, but... Yeah, that's how I did it as well. I played it with a, a roommate in college. There was a lot of, like, uh, waist-deep wading through water, which made me very uncomfortable and also made for very slow gameplay, which I was not into. So those segments of the game I did not love when you were in the swamp. Yeah. But uh, I'm trying to remember what 6 was about. I think 6 is the one that starts with you shooting the president. I uh, don't remember that. To be decided. I basically anyway. don't remember 6 at all. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I mean, those are good. It's good to have... I wonder what the multiplayer will be like, if there will be multiplayer, because the co-op really made those games. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Uh, having a good co-op game like this on Switch, I, I feel like they're going to get that aspect of it right, because the Switch is all about, like, cooperative play. And I wonder if you will just be able to hand a Joy-Con and just like play it that way. Because what are the controls like? Well, do you think there see, there's too many button presses to be able to do that with just one Joy-Con? I want to say yes, actually, because you have to like manage. I feel your like you're right. Yeah, and like move the camera around. But who knows? I don't know. Do you like no more heroes? I have never played one. I like that Suda guy, Suda Fifty One. He is a crazy guy. And I think <laughs> I have played at least one of his games, but uh, Travis Takedown, I think, is the name of the main character of this. I like these like crazy Japanese beat em ups. And uh, this is something I might pick up, but I need to like watch playthroughs of one and two to get the, the story down. That was going to be my question is are you going to be completely lost if you haven't played sure. the previous ones? Because I think it gets really meta and just abstract at times. And so I maybe instead of watching a playthrough, what I actually need to do is read the Wikipedia article where people are breaking down like, yeah, when he turns into a horse, it actually means this. <laughs> so I know like the true lore of episodes one and two. Yeah. Well, that's coming 2020. I don't think they were more specific than that. It was a good trailer, though. Yeah. Contra Rogue Corpse? I don't remember this at all. So, I don't remember it much either. Again, this it's been about a month since this thing happened. Uh, I don't know. Do you like Contra at all? I have no nostalgia for it. <laughs> I know people are super into it, but that was like... My first console was a Genesis, so that's like post-Contra. Uh, I was more of a Golden Axe type guy. But um, I played Contra on an arcade machine at the dentist's office, like whenever <laughs> I went there. But that's l really my only experience with it. Was like maybe ten minutes of Contra at the dentist's office. I mean, I get office. it. It looks fun, but it's not something I have any emotional attachment to. Yeah. Well, it is coming up September 2019, which is also going to be a rough time to release a game like this. Very true. Uh, but on top of that, they did also announce that Contra Anniversary Collection was coming. I did not catch when. Demon X Machina, which was a thing they showed the first E3 after the Switch launched, I feel like. Uh, that crazy robot game, I guess it's coming out in September, September 13th this year. Yeah, is it Demon Damon X Mach? I don't know how you pronounce this. I guess it would be Damon, yeah. But it looks pretty cool. I don't know. I was more interested in another game that seemed vaguely similar, at least in terms of the art style that we'll get to in a minute. But uh, yeah, it's coming up September 13th. And I think a lot of people are maybe looking forward to it. It seemed like it was getting a pretty good response. They released a demo for it, I feel like, oh, like they last did. year. Yeah, that's uh, right. But I did not download it. But do you remember back in the day? I feel like I don't remember a lot of game commercials. But one commercial I feel like I saw a lot of was a commercial for Panzer Dragoon Orta back in the day. I remember seeing commercials, yeah. And now there's a new Panzer Dragoon game. I guess. Is this, this is, is this a beloved game? <laughs> I mean, people loved Panzer Dragoon Orta, I think. Did they? I don't know. I don't know that I of anyone who's played it, so. It's like an on rails thing where it's like Star Fox, but you're riding yeah. a dragon, basically. Yeah, I remember that much. I just, I never played it, so. But that is coming out this winter. Oh, gosh, this winter and early part of next year is going to be crazy. <laughs> Let's get into this meaty chunk of a thing we're going to talk about. I'm not great at transitions today. I'm very tired. <laughs> but yeah. uh, This is when the show about, was getting really good. Let's ramp it up and get our swords and shields out and talk about Pokemon, which is coming out November 15th. See, you got it back. You got your ability I'm to transition it. back. Yeah, That's Pokemon right. Sword and Shield, November 15th. 
Uh, they showed a bunch of this during the uh, Treehouse Live that I keep referencing, but uh, they did say you can use the Pokeball Plus if you got that with Let's Go Eevee and Pikachu. You can use it, but you can't use it for the game. I was confused on what they meant by that, but I think you can just like store a Pokemon from uh, Sword yeah, and Shield. There's no it tossing to catch anymore there's right. no motion control catching and also they said that when you're in the wild zone or whatever it's called you need to control the camera around you so like that requires yeah, a second yeah. joystick which i everybody wanted they wanted it to be a little more like the breath of the wild of pokemon games where there was like more of an open worldy feel to yeah. it where you could control the camera and they they're giving that to you with the, the wild area but they still have like the more traditional like exploration areas uh that you you're used to from previous pokemon games but yeah they showed that wild area out and it does seem pretty cool because it's a little bit i think it's supposed to be online enabled so like when you run out into that area you're just sort of like you can run a, come across other players uh, which seems kind of cool to me. It's a little bit like making the uh, uh, online MMO version of Pokemon. And they, they also showed the Max Raid battles, which I swear is just them uh, pulling in the raid battles from Pokemon Go into a main like series Pokemon game. Yeah, because you need other... You basically all hang out around this like circle that appears, and then everyone fights with their pokemon one person gets to dynamax their pokemon and then i think everyone gets a chance to catch the pokemon yeah that's what i understood as well although it's confusing like how they expect you to coordinate with their subpar like communication yeah. tools for There's online no voice stuff. chat i assume yeah exactly i don't know how they expect you to really coordinate those attacks but uh i don't know it could still be fun it could be definitely like another thing to do to keep you busy in the end game after you've sort yeah. of completed, like become the champion of the area or whatever. Have we talked about Dynamaxing on this channel yet? Did, did they reveal it at E3 or prior to E3? I feel like maybe we talked about it during one of our podcasts, but it's been a while. Right. They did they did show that part of it off, I think. During That's a, right, because there previous, was a yeah, there was a direct only about Pokemon right before. E3. Yeah, yeah, but that's like the new like Mega Evolution, maybe is that what it was called? Mm. Oh, maybe. Yeah, it seemed vaguely similar to that, but it works a little bit differently. And I think an interesting thing I heard, I forget which outlet was talking about this, but they were talking about an interview they had done with the developers of the game, and they were like, "So this is like the first true main series new pokemon game that's happening on a console that you're expected to play be able to play on your tv so they thought it was cool to have the idea of making everything bigger right so your screen is bigger you're able to see everything better and now you have pokemon who can also grow a lot larger and in order to uh, accommodate that you also have these giant arenas which sort of takes place of gems from previous games so i thought that was kind of interesting that, that is, blowing everything giant... up is like the the equivalent of blowing up the game onto a console rather than a mobile screen yeah i agree i so you're definitely getting this right yeah are you getting sword or shield i will get sword probably Ooh. are you gonna get shield uh i don't know i'll probably I'm only going to buy one copy of it, so probably my girlfriend is more into it than I am, so whichever one she wants is the one that I'll play. Uh, should we talk about Astral Chain, which I think you were talking about earlier? Yes, that was you read my mind. I was thinking of Astral Chain because there was a time when they were playing trailers for these and i could not tell them apart initially but now it's much more clear because they they are pretty different actually but uh what do you think of this game i'm into this i love bayonetta and this is the team that makes bayonetta platinum games platinum games yeah and the control scheme seems very interesting to me because it's almost like you have to like surround these giant like demons or i don't know what they are but you like wrap them in a chain basically and then they become yours and then they they fight with you or for you i'm not sure but the action combat of this looked great you're like some sort of future demon cop thing 
uh, the aesthetic is crazy, and I'm sure the story is insane. Yeah. But uh, I, this looks super fun to me. What do you think? Yeah, I don't know a lot about it or how it's going to play, but I'm definitely into the look of the game and just the idea of being this like cop who's out there fighting these crazy looking monsters or whatever. It seems pretty cool to me. I'm definitely going to pick this up. As am I. August 30th. August 30th. Now... This other one that came out after that was Empire of Sin. I don't know if... Do you remember this? I do not. It was a weird little thing. It was like an isometric game about 1930s gangsters? Question mark? <laughs> yeah, you wrote a question mark in the notes. Because I I don't know what this game is. It's coming up spring 2020, so they got some time before they... Like, they could potentially show more of this to give us a more clear idea of what this game is. But, yeah, that happened. Uh, and then they did Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, The Black Order. I don't know if you July care 19th. about these at all. I don't. No, I don't care yeah, about this at all. But it's coming neither. out soon. <laughs> yeah, it is coming out soon. I know there's, like, a strong fan base for these games. They're, they're super into them. So I guess it's cool for those people. It, it looks like sort of a throwback to an older style of a game. So, I mean, if you have nostalgia for that style of game, I feel like you're going to love this one as well. Cadence of Hyrule is already out now. Yeah, it came out shortly after E3, actually. And I Did don't, you get it? Have you played it? No, I didn't. It's kind of hard to explain. There's like a beat or rhythm style game that's part of how you play this game. I'm confused on how to, so, to actually play it. <laughs> I watched someone play it. Uh, when you, there's no enemies around, you can move freely whenever you want, uh, but you hop. Everything is grid-based, kind of. Like, it's almost like, uh, it's like showing up beneath you, but it only shows up around a small radius, so you always know the grid around you, but it's not like the entire level is a grid. But, when monsters appear, then, like, a beat starts, and you have to move to the beat. And so a little bit, it's, like, kind of a... What was that game I really liked? Uh, Into the Breach, but you can't stop it. Like, there's no time to plan. You just have mm. to go. So you can kind of... You can see where enemies are going to go and what they're going to do, but you can't... You can't stop it, you know? <laughs> can't stop, won't stop. Can't stop, won't stop. I have not played this, and I don't really have an interest in it because I think it would stress me out way too much. Crypt yeah. the Necro Dancer is the game it's based on and that's something i never picked up but i don't know i mean i like zelda stuff but this, yeah. this is not my cup of tea i from what i've seen of that game i feel like i would also just get stressed out by it and not really enjoy it as much as i am supposed to so mario and sonic are going to the olympics set now this was the highlight for you you told me what <laughs> i don't care about this <laughs> Oh, this wasn't your highlight? I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, I'm into the 2020 Olympics because that's when Akira happens. But uh, other than that, I mean, didn't this already happen? I feel like I've been to arcades where there's Mario, Sonic, like giant arcade cabinets. Like, is this a, this is a franchise, I think. Yeah, yeah. This franchise has been around for a while. We like I used to work at a GameStop competitor and we took in games like this all the time. It's been around for a long time. I don't think it's super popular, but... Weird. It's like almost like Wii Sports almost. Yeah, a little bit with... It's just like a collection of mini games, but you yeah. can be Sonic. Yeah, and I, I mean, I guess there'll be some hype considering the 2020 Olympics is coming up. And I don't know how they intend to use the motion controls of the Joy-Cons. I guess that could be interesting, but... More importantly... Let's dig into Animal Crossing New Horizons, which takes place on an island, I guess. Yeah, and it's coming up in March 20th, 2020. There's so many 20s in there. <laughs> uh, what do you think of this? I have never played an Animal Crossing game, but I like Stardew Valley. And I, yeah. I like a game where you're just like chilling out and building a world, basically. You're like, you know, doing crops or mining or whatever. So this is something I will probably check out, I have to say. Yeah, this is a really beloved series. It hasn't really appealed to me. I did play Animal Crossing Pocket Camp, that mobile, like the phone game, and I didn't love it. Although they had like weird things going on with like wait timers on a lot of like the mobile trappings that really mm. ruin games. 
they had some of that going on, which was not great. But yeah, this game will not be that. So good news there. Uh, yeah, this definitely is like one of those games, like you said, like a Stardew Valley that's just kind of super chill and you can just sort of build up a location. And, and this one, it's going to be an island. So I don't know. I, I don't know if I'll pick it up, especially on that date when it comes out. Uh, I feel like there's going to be a lot of other things coming out that I'm a little bit more interested in. But when does Cyberpunk come out? April something shortly after this is the main thing <laughs> so yeah it's a game that i think it's gonna have its huge fan base so it's gonna sell super well on the switch but i don't know if i'm chomping at the bit to play it i'll pick it up and maybe we'll do a video on it yeah you definitely should i definitely want to do a video on it so i even though i know i'm not gonna pick it up you should pick it up <laughs> uh and then they had like i think a sizzle reel of other ports coming and dauntless is coming which is a, i know a game that you enjoy yeah i don't know if i'll play it on switch or not i've been playing it on pc uh but i mean it's free to play they they say the game has hit the 10 million player mark and it's a cool game and it, like like I said, it's free, so there's really no reason not to try it. But it is cool that it also has cross progression save or cross save. What is the order of oh, those? Oh, really? So yeah, you should be able to just like log in and continue where you left off, which is that cool. is enticing to me. Yeah. So that's the destiny promise. Yeah, exactly. So I, I definitely like it for that. I like that I could just go ahead and download this on my Switch, so that if I'm traveling. I could still play and pick up where I left off. Well, should we get into the final part? The most exciting, a double whammy of exciting <laughs> things? Yeah, why don't you walk me through this? Okay, so all of a sudden we started hearing Smash music again. And we we're like, oh, more Smash stuff. What is this? Like levels or what's going on? And as it turns out, it was like cut to Donkey Kong chilling out. Because remember the last reveal or one of the reveals was King K. Rule, and they did like a fake out with King K. Rule, but now King K. Rule is like chilling out with Donkey Kong and his kid. Uh, Diddy Kong is his kid, right? Uh, or is Donkey Kong so? his uncle? Not important. Anyway, <laughs> they're hanging out all of a sudden. This is one of those things, Zach, just like that Keanu Reeves thing, where I went online and I just like, I actually watched reaction videos, because I, <laughs> I usually hate watching reaction videos, but this is a thing where I wanted to see people reacting to this because as they were chilling out in their little like bungalow, a little jiggy came by and that's like a signal for everyone like, oh man, it's actually happening. Banjo-Kazooie is gonna come to Smash. And then they looked out the window and they did a fake out, which I thought was very good, where it was like backlit and it was Banjo-Kazooie, but then the light shined on it and it was Duck Hunt and it was very <laughs> funny. And then Banjo-Kazooie came busting in and it looks great and people freaked out. I've watched probably 30 videos of different people being like, oh my God, Banjo-Kazooie. It, <laughs> it was a great moment of E3, I have to say. Yeah, it was a cool way to do the reveal. Did, did they do something similar for a, another reveal? I think maybe the King K. Rule reveal was vaguely yeah. similar. I mean, they, pretty much every one of them they it's kind of like a surprise type i mean remember when they did that persona one and they were like oh is this a new persona game uh, and then yeah. all of a sudden they flipped that card that was something else i watched a lot of yeah and it was uh like the smash brothers thing like they're so good i mean they weren't good at the beginning of this press conference where they were just like hey look dragon quest this <laughs> is fun right but usually they do a fun little thing like this and it's great I think the main reasoning behind that was because I don't think anybody's super excited about another sword guy being added to Smash Why Brothers. Why do that? Like, but... what is the, like, that's so crazy that they wasted one of their DLC slots on that. <laughs> I thought it was going to be, there was a big rumor it was going to be Steve from Minecraft, and that would have been insane. That would have been crazy. People were anticipating Duck Hunt being, or not Duck Hunt, gosh, Banjo-Kazooie being added. And so it, I guess on that level, it wasn't like a shocker, but the way they revealed it was super fun. So I hope when Doom Eternal comes out, there is a trailer for Doom Eternal that turns out to be a Smash Bros <laughs> thing. Cause that's How crazy like, would that be? It would be so good. Like that, that switch that gets flipped where you think you're watching something and then all of a sudden it's a Smash Brothers reveal is like so good and satisfying. They do really cool stuff with that. I, I, def I definitely would rather have gotten Doom Guy instead of... Uh... You still could. I mean, it, I think it's still a possibility. Yeah. How crazy would that have been though if instead of just showing Dragon Quest Guy is going to be in this game, if they were like, 
they led off with, oh, is Doom, they're going to show Doom coming to Switch? God, and so then good. it was just, uh, he's being added to Smash Brothers. I predict, here's my bold, probably safe prediction. I predict that a character will be revealed at the Game Awards again this year, because they did it last year, I think. Yeah. Well, how many DLC characters were they doing? They were doing five, right? Uh, Yes. How many have I they already done? True. They did Joker, and I don't think Piranha Plant counted. So they done Joker, Banjo, and Dragon Quest guy. So I guess two more? Yeah, that makes sense. Man, I hope they're both good. Yeah, I hope one of them is Doom guy. I hope that also. Uh, And that would have been a great way to end the press conference. A great reveal. Everyone was freaking out. And then a man came up. I forget who it was. He was like, hey, thanks for watching. And then he like leaned in and put his little hand up to his mouth. And he was like, we have one more thing we're going to show you. And everyone's like, oh, what is this? And then they did it. It was like the it was the best one more thing of the press conference, I'm gonna say. Yeah. And uh, of E3. Do you wanna, yes, of E3. That's what I meant. But what do you wanna do you wanna describe it? Okay, so it starts out and it's like all dark, and there are these like green neon glowy glyphs like floating everywhere, and there's these like dark tendrils, and then you see a torch. And the the glyphs keep swirling and you're like oh what is this this looks kind of like the breath of the wild uh, art style and then all of a sudden you kind of see zelda and link and they're just like exploring this cave and you're like what is this some kind of dlc for breath of the wild then eventually they uh they show what looks like it could be like ganondorf maybe or some sort of like crazy monster and they they i think just ganon Ganon. Ganondorf is when he is like a big pig monster, but when he's a man, he's called Ganon, I think. I learned that recently. Oh, did you? Anyway, and then they like zoom out and they show sort of the land of Hyrule and it's all clear because we took care of everything. And, we did it. And it turns out this is an announcement that a sequel to Breath of the Wild is currently in development. This was a crazy, because also the music that's playing when they show this creepy cave is like, kind of the backwards music that I forget what oh, Zelda yeah. game is in, but it's kind of this like weird backwardsy music. And then there's like this like darkness that envelops like a rat. And then Ganon's corpse, I assume Ganon's corpse, like is just like skeletal and his eyes glow red. And then it just cuts to black once you see Hyrule Castle rising into the air and there's like no music. And it just like white text comes up on screen that says the sequel to Breath of the Wild is in development. And I just thought that was great. Like complete silence, just kind of like blowing your mind with that single sentence. Yeah. So is this the upside down in Breath of the Wild? I don't know. So let's speculate about this. What is this? It's a direct sequel. It's the same. They've gone on record as saying it's the same Hyrule. So... What do you want this to be? Like more shrines? Like, or what? Yeah, because they made it sound like they were originally planning this as just the DLC, but it like yes, expanded so much that they were like, this is just going to be a new game now. Too um, many ideas for DLC. Let's just make Breath of the Wild 2 or whatever it's going to be called. Yeah, and people are speculating because you see Link and Zelda together exploring this like dark cave that maybe there's going to be either co-op where you can play as both Zelda and Link and so it'll be like a two-player game or maybe you have the option to pick who you want to play as. Do you want to play as Link or do you want to play as Zelda? And either one of those options is honestly pretty cool. I would be into that. So my wish list for this, I want a hookshot because I love hookshots and I think especially with like the emphasis on climbing that there was in Breath of the Wild. I feel like having a hookshot would be great. I want weapons to not explode yeah. every once in a while. That would also be awesome. I want, like, just like in the same vein as a hookshot, I want gadgets to come back. You know, like uh, Zelda's known for like, oh, now you have, uh, what's a good example? Like a hookshot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know, like a slingshot or, or just like other things where like, oh, all of a sudden, oh, I have a mirror shield now. Now I can solve this kind of puzzle. Yeah. Uh, like I, I like a gadget wheel. Like like on N64, there was, you know, the three C buttons. You could equip three gadgets at a time, three items, and you would, you know, figure stuff out. It would be cool. Uh, I don't know. What else, what are you uh, hoping for? I mean, if this is a continuation, that begs the question, like, will you already have the Master Sword? Will you still have to go out and find mm. it or, or get it somehow? What if this? What if this? Uh, what if you only play 
as Zelda, and so you don't have the Master Sword. Interesting. Now it's Link's turn to be locked in this crazy combat, like on Hyrule Castle or whatever, and so oh, yeah, it's up yeah. to you. Like you've been, as Zelda, you were just like chilling out for a hundred years, so now it's time to stretch your well, legs I mean, and like. Zelda wasn't just chilling out. She was also like suppressing Ganon and like whatever. holding him back or whatever. Like, sure, she didn't get to go out and explore, but she was like still an active participant behind she the scenes. Sitting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> either, I don't know, man. Like, way. what else? Uh, like, do you think Castle Town is going to be completely rebuilt? That's a good question. Well, so I, that's the other thing because we already like solved all the shrines and everything. Like, that's what keeps making me think this is just going to be like the upside down version of Hyrule. It did seem to have a darker tone. Isn't there like one of the Zelda games, like one of the earlier Zelda games that was kind of like that? Yeah, I think it was Link to the Past where you could go into like the Shadow Realm, but you were a rabbit until you got an item that allowed you to not be a rabbit in the Shadow Realm. What if you're like that, but without the rabbit part? What if you're like that with the rabbit part? <laughs> You could just like swap back and forth. I want like so. I there were some lists people were giving of like, oh yeah, I hope there's more of like dungeons, which would be cool. But uh, you know, just thinking about it, like this could be a high roll that's much more populated. Like it was a beautiful world to explore, but what if there were just like way more settlements and NPCs? Yeah, that's and, a good like, point. Like you weren't. It wasn't just like three or four villages. That's a good point because yeah, the version of high roll we were exploring was sort of semi post apocalyptic. Yeah. And so yeah, if we've like saved the day and brought back civilization, maybe it'll look a lot more different than we remember. I'm very excited for this. This is a game that I will get at midnight probably. <laughs> yeah, I would go you to and a midnight I, sale for that. You and I lined up at midnight to get our switches with Breath of the Wild. We did, and I got a special poster and I still have it. I did too. I hung it up. Me too. But yeah, this is this was a great way to end the press basically to end e3 because this was the last press conference yeah and it was it was nice because with all the other press conferences you could kind of tell there was a lot of like this is a sequel or a remake or this is an expansion to an existing game or like here's something that's coming out but like you could tell that they were kind of holding back for next gen Whereas with Nintendo, since they don't have to worry about another console generation next year, they're just like, here's all the cool stuff. And so it was a really cool way to end E3, I thought. Well, speaking of ending E3, that's not what we're doing because yeah. we're going to have a favorite things of E3 video coming out uh, pretty soon. We are. Yeah, I'm pretty excited to uh, sort of wrap up E3. Well, I guess... Or will we? We're not really wrapping up our coverage of E3 since it's now E365, but yes. um, we're going to do like, yeah, our top fives, what our most anticipated things are, the things we liked the most, and uh, sort of break it all down in that way. And who won E3? Mm, the age old question. E3? We will find out. But anyway, until then, you can check us out on Twitter at Starside Cafe and uh, follow us or subscribe to our YouTube channel and we'll catch you later. Goodbye. Goodbye.